This is a 68-year-old uh, female who actually presented about um, six months ago. And she initially presented with uh, a very large hiatal hernia, which underwent a hiatal hernia repair and a Nissen fundal plication. Uh, it was complicated by a large um, pleural effusion. And uh, postoperatively, after the pleural effusion resolved, uh, repeat CAT scan of the chest and, and uh, abdomen actually showed a large five-centimeter cyst. Uh, at that time, it was unknown whether it was a pseudocyst versus a, uh, a mucinous cystic neoplasm. Uh, I initially did her uh, endoscopic ultrasound about six months ago. At uh, that time, I did find a five-centimeter cyst. Uh, I drained the cyst. Uh, it was endoscopically and uh, fluid-wise, it looked like it was a pseudocyst. This amylase was elevated. CEA was essentially normal. Um, I did, we, we did send off... Um, because initially the, the fluid was very light, we did send off a uh, red path to, to look for uh, any KRAS mutations that may suggest a cystic mucinous neoplasm or a cystic, um, uh, question, or intraductal papillary mucinous uh, neoplasm. This, the KRAS did come back uh, positive, and on the red path recording, it showed it was an indolent possible. So in other words, uh, it was consistent with a, with a mucinous neoplasm. Although I was... Um, Clinically and under endoscopic ultrasound, and also the fluid looked like more like it was an amylase. Uh, since it was an elevated amylase, I felt it was a pseudocyst. Uh, the patient was supposed, after it was drained, um, a month later she was supposed to have a repeat CT scan, but did not want to have any more CT scans because she had so many. So we, de she, we decided based on the abnormality in the KRAS and the, uh, the cyst, we would repeat an endoscopic ultrasound. Uh, this is a pseudocyst, basically. Hopefully this is resolved. Uh, if this is a mucinous cystic uh, neoplasm, it most likely will have reoccurrence and we will be able to recheck the fluid again uh, at this point in time. So we're going to pass the endoscope down, echo endoscope down. And we'll start off by evaluating the uh, head of the pancreas. The, uh, the initial um, the cyst was located in the tail, but we'll, we'll, you know, we'll do a thorough evaluation and start. Looking at the head of the pancreas first. We see the bile duct. Head of the pancreas. Ampulla. And we go down the second portion, straight out. Look at the unsinate process from below. So, so far there's no uh, abnormalities with the pancreatic duct. The pancreatic duct actually looks fairly normal, not dilated. There's no evidence of any other side branch cysts. look for any pancreatic masses here in the body neck of the pancreas area so we can see the pancreatic duct looks basically normal and we'll Doppler to confirm those are just blood vessels so we'll look closer at the um, tail of the pancreas, where this was initially was at. See this an abnormality here. Which is most likely where the cyst was at.
That's actually most likely, I think, her kidney cyst that she has. Let's take a better look. But the pancreas looks actually looks very good. Let's take a look at that kidney in a second. There's a kidney. The tail of the pancreas looks fine. No evidence of any cysts or fluid collections. There is a lymph node right there. So we'll point out in a second. Which we can actually biopsy. It's almost two centimeters by 1.3 centimeters. So I'm going to use, in this case, um, this is a celiac lymph node. Don't see, a, don't see a, any pancreatic duct out, dilatation. Don't see any side branches or any, any cysts. So what we'll do is we'll use a 25 uh, cook core and we'll take some samples. I'm assuming this is most likely just going to be inflammatory uh, given our history of a, of a pseudocyst and now resolution of it. Very regular lymph node here. It's worthwhile taking a sample. Actually extends another lymph node right here. And a second lymph node right here. The third lymph node. And I'm going to measure 2.14. So I'm going to use basically the um, slow pool capillary technique to uh, sample this uh, lymph node. Trying to get it in the field. They're right in it. You can see there. We're going to have a slow pull. Go ahead, start. Do a fan-like technique. Try to get all the different areas of the, uh, get a good sample of the lymph node. No, no suction. I tend not to use suction in the first passes. I want to make it as cellular as possible and have no, uh, least amount of blood as possible to contaminate the sample. This is the area where the um, we're going to see right now most likely where the initial pseudocyst was at. There's currently no fluid collection, just basically a just some necrotic tissue left in that area.
do, uh, I like to do at least um, three to six passes, minimum six passes if I don't have a cytopathologist in the room. And with a cytopathologist in the room, it varies uh, depending on uh, what we're finding. And if they need any extra tissue for um, any specific stains. Okay, so I'm going. Now let me, uh, let me actually, yeah, I'm riding the lymph node right there. We'll just, uh, there you go. Use the elevator to actually move it in different directions, try to get more tissue and allow that area to hook. Sometimes in smaller um, lesions, um, we would do what, uh, it's called the woodpecker technique, where we do very fast motions, um, which we'll probably do for the next, the next pass. So we'll take a look at the liver. The dome of the liver right here. Left ventricle. Take a, take a good look at the rest of the liver. Where you get set set up for the next pass. There's a remnant of the, the pseudo cyst, whatever is left here. Just basically dead tissue. I wouldn't put a needle in there. I don't want to contaminate it or get it infected. She's currently not having any symptoms of weight loss or any other worrisome symptoms at all. And she's had this cyst, or initially she had this cyst about a year ago. Hold the scope right here. See so right inside the uh, magnify that, and then what we'll do is we'll do the um, woodpecker technique. We'll lock it. Okay, start pulling. Good. And pull down just a little bit. Whip. Trying to go faster than the lymph node moves and achieving uh, better uh, basic grinding of here of the tissue. And then we'll put it on. Nope. For lymph nodes, I rarely use suction. I get a much better specimen. We'll take a look in a second what the specimens look like. So basically, the, the findings are um, most likely this was a uh, pseudocyst based on the, all that's left is um, the five centimeter cyst is pretty much a shrunk down to less than uh, three centimeters, and it's mainly now organizing tissue. There's no fluid collection left. The pancreatic um, duct seems to be intact without any significant abnormalities. There, there was some celiac uh, lymphadenopathy that was larger than I expected, although she's had you know, recurrent left pleural effusions from her last, um, uh, for her Nissen fundal blication and her uh, hiatal hernia repair. So this may just be inflammatory in nature, but we took uh, six samples are being sent for um, 
pathology and for evaluation. If there's any abnormalities they're seen suggestive of an infectious etiology, uh, it should be evaluated um, with some of the, the cell, some of the, um, the specimen will go into cultures. So here we're going to look at the samples. You can see basically multiple small little worms, basically nice histological tissue. And since I use very minimal suction, I get, I, most likely these have very minimal red cells in them and mainly tissue from the uh, lymph nodes.